Hi everyone, I'm Barry Silver with Common Good Vermont and it is Giving Tuesday today. I am here with a number of local nonprofits and we're here to celebrate uh, worldwide or it's a worldwide day of philanthropy that takes place today on Giving Tuesday, the Tuesday after Thanksgiving every year. And we, are, as I said, we're in the Channel 17 studios today doing this live show um, to learn more about some local nonprofits and how we can help support them today and also throughout the rest of the year. So I will briefly introduce my guests and then we'll get into the program and you'll learn more about them and uh, more about the organizations that they represent. So I, uh, to the right of me is Sarah Wool and she's the Director of Development and Communications with AgeWell. And then next to her is Erica Nichols Fraser communications manager for CLIF, which is the Children's Literacy Foundation. Foundation yes. <laughs> and then Kelly Doherty, executive director of Steps Vermont, or Steps, Steps VT. Steps to End Domestic Steps Violence. Steps to End Domestic Violence. Yeah. Sorry, I was going by your, your yeah. Twitter handle. You guys are so <laughs> yeah. active on social media, and you'll be talking about that a yeah. little bit later. So, so Steps to End Domestic Violence. And then Dan LeClaire over at the end of the table, who's the director of development for 1% for the Planet. Thank you all. Welcome and thank you all for being here. Thank you, thank you for having thank you. us. So we are a small group, but we are a really great example of how diverse Vermont's nonprofit sector is. And I was really excited when we, um, when we pulled together this group that we would have representation from Vermont's aging community and um, children, early childhood early literacy. Childhood literacy yeah. Violence prevention and the environmental sector. Um, I don't want to talk too much because I want to make sure that you all have time to talk about your organizations and your campaigns. But I do want to talk mm -hmm. about um, Giving Tuesday and share a little bit more about what Giving Tuesday is in case there are people mm -hmm. out there watching who aren't familiar with it. It's been around, I think the first Giving Tuesday was in 2012, mm -hmm. so this would be the sixth year. It's been growing exponentially in terms of uh, its reach and impact for the nonprofit community not just in Vermont, not just in the United States, but all throughout the world. It's really, it's a global fundraising and awareness raising effort for the work that um, nonprofits and the social good sector does around the world. And it's been called, I think it's really, it's a, it's a way to kick off the charitable season. So even though we're celebrating today uh, on Giving Tuesday, it's really an opportunity for people to think about their year end um, their holiday and end of year giving. And it's been called the antidote to Black Friday and Cyber <laughs> Monday, which we just experienced yesterday. And uh, hopefully today, instead of spending money on stuff, you'll be encouraged to, to do good and give back to those that really give so much to your community. Um, and then one other thing that is mind boggling was that uh, last year, over $177 million was raised online. So I think that's a, a global figure and that's pretty staggering and just um, I think amazing in terms of the amount of generosity that there is out there in the world. So we want to tap into that generosity today and, um, and really start with you, Sarah, in talking about a little bit about your organization, Age Well, your Giving Tuesday plans and um, you know, what you want people to know about how they can support you today and, and I guess every day. Great. Thank you so much for having us. I'm Sarah Wool from Age Well, um, formerly the Champlain Valley Agency on Aging, and we are the largest um, agency on aging in Vermont. So we serve all of northwestern Vermont, basically all the way down from Brandon up to the Canadian border. Um, and we are basically uh, the kind of network for the aging population. Um, and so we coordinate services. We provide um, Meals on Wheels. We're the largest provider of Meals on Wheels in the state as well. Um, and we really connect uh, the aging population with all the resources and all the supports they need to hopefully um, stay at home where they typically want to be um, and remain healthy, vibrant, um, and engaged, um, which those are typically the three biggest threats to um, aging, um, would be hunger, isolation, and um, loss of independence. So if it's um, a call to our helpline, um, that's typically kind of where everything is funneled through. Mm -hmm. People will call and say they're in need of meal deliveries, they're in need of access to transportation. Um, 
So the helpline really kind of diverts people to the proper resource. And then uh, Meals on Wheels is probably our, our most recognized brand, and um, that is truly um, enabling people to access nutrition, which is also um, really key to keeping people vibrant and healthy. Um, and, and that sometimes may be the only person that somebody sees in a day is that one meal delivery. Um, and so for Giving Tuesday, this is kind of our way of um, you know, kicking off the, the end of year giving. And we're fortunate to have a $2,500 matching gift on the table um, from Lane, Lane Rock Sperry. And um, we are, uh, I just got an update that we are um, almost to the 2,500 already. So nice. um, we're, we're hoping to get there and raise at least $5,000. We do have a goal of 10,000, but that, that may be a little bit lofty, but- Oh, come on, um, we can do it. <laughs> our aging population, um, particularly in Vermont, is growing exponentially and the resources, as with, I'm sure you'll hear, many nonprofits are decreasing. So we are really um, relying on the community to help support the, um, we are, we are one of the few remaining um, Meals on Wheels delivery services that do not have a wait list. Hmm. Um, so really community support is, um, is helping us to kind of bridge that gap in the increase in demand and the need for services. So um, please visit agewellvt.org um, okay. to learn more about all of our services and to hopefully help us meet our, our goal today. Great. And thank you for having us. Well, thank you. Thanks for telling us about uh, your work. That's. I didn't know how comprehensive it was, I guess, in terms of the amount of services. I was aware of Meals on Wheels, but all the other things. It's pretty that much anything the aging population needs, um, we will connect them with those resources and or provide them. Great. And the hotline as well. People can yep. find that number on the website. Yep. It's all on the okay. website. Have you done a Giving Tuesday campaign before? or is this? We a have. And this is our really, um, I think, our first, I think, really Com complete um, campaign. We are we are on Facebook. All of our staff members have their own page, um, and we have this matching gift, which we have not had before. So, we're feeling really confident that this year will be our kind of gangbuster year. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, we'd like to help make that happen. Um, anything else? So, it's great you've grown your your campaign. So, obviously, you've learned some stuff from participating. In Giving Tuesday in the past, and recognized that there's some real opportunity to spread the word about your your mission and your organization. I think everybody likes a kickoff celebration, so I think we really see this as kind of the um, the the starting gate where we hopefully um, by end of year we'll make it to our our final goal. But this is for every I think nonprofit out there. This has really created some pomp and circumstance around giving and. Um, you know, on the on the trail of Black Friday and Cyber Monday, I think um, I think this makes people feel good um, mm -hmm. about about where their dollars are going, and it, it, it it's exciting. Yeah. It's a it's a really exciting time of year for nonprofits. So, um, and we're all hoping to close that gap that I think we all have in our budgets. So yeah. this is where we do it, and and I think that's an important message too, is that. The day, today is Giving Tuesday, but the giving sh doesn't end today. So, you know, think about making a gift today. If you can do it, terrific. But uh, there is a need, and the need continues, and there is a gap that needs to be filled, and that can't be filled without your support. And our, I just throw out our website is agewellvt.org. Okay, terrific. All right, well, let's move on to talk about Cliff. Sure. So I'm Erica Nichols Fraser with the Children's Literacy Foundation, or CLIF, as you'll hear us refer to it throughout the throughout the conversation. Uh, so the Children's Literacy Foundation's mission is to nurture a love of reading and writing among low-income, at-risk, and rural kids up to age 12 in both Vermont and New Hampshire. Uh, so we do serve both states, although I'll focus on Vermont in this conversation since that's what where we are. Um, <laughs> but I, I really think that that love of reading and writing is um, really essential to what we do, that it's not just giving kids the resources, um, the books, and the, the ability to read, but that it's really encouraging them to, to view reading and writing and literacy as a whole as um, really valuable, worth their time, an enjoyable and positive experience. Um, we know that, that is, early literacy is one of the strongest indicators um, of a child's academic and then future professional and um, personal and social success as well. The ability to communicate, the ability to connect with others, to empathize with others through um, reading the, their stories <laughs> um, are really important. And unfortunately, um, 
so many families in, in the state do um, have lim very limited access, limited resources, and the idea of having um, a lot of books at home just really isn't something that is doable for a lot of families. Um, and so while we are a lot more than books, we do bring literacy programs um, all over the state. So we have six basic programs. They all involve an element of storytelling, um, and they all involve our um, we have currently I believe, 61 or 62 um, author, children's authors, illustrators, poets, graphic novelists, and storytellers that we work with, including, I'm going to promote a couple, um, Jason Chin, who is a fabulous South Burlington uh, author and illustrator. He'll be coming to um, one of our programs at the Sustainability Academy uh, in Burlington this Thursday. Oh, that's right around the <laughs> this corner. This week, just around the corner. Um, we do have a couple other, um, Elizabeth Bloomley, who owns um, the Flying Pig Bookstore in Shelburne, is another one of our authors and illustrators. Um, who is really fabulous as well. And all of these folks, these books that I have here, Catherine Patterson is one more that um, folks will, will recognize and remember a lot of her books, a Vermont author. And so she's still one of um, the authors that we send out to schools, child care centers, to after school programs, to libraries, um, to just about anywhere that young children are, including homeless shelters, um, food kitchens, food pantries. Um, and affordable housing units to try to engage these kids um, with stories, with storytelling. They get to actually meet authors and illustrators and see the people who make some of their favorite books. Um, and then we also, all of our programs also involve an element of a book giveaway. So the kids actually getting to, to choose their own books to take home and keep. And for uh, many of the kids we serve, this is the first time they've had that opportunity to be able to um, look at you know, a pile of hundreds of books and pick one that is really meaningful to them uh, and to have that as their own. And um, one thing that we rely a lot on our volunteers to put these um, beautiful stickers that say, say Cliff um, in them in each of, <laughs> each of our books so the children can then um, write their names and feel that, that feeling of ownership mm -hmm. over something that is theirs to keep. Um, that is really a powerful experience. Mm -hmm. So for Giving Tuesday, we're asking folks to, to give a book to a child in need. Um, just $10, just a $10 donation can give one of these beautiful high quality books um, to a child who may not otherwise have access to, to their books in their home. Um, and of course, it is, is more than books. It is something I want to emphasize that we also involve um, are involved in developing literacy experiences, positive experiences. So um, I mentioned the Sustainability Academy is one of the programs we're working with right now in Burlington. Uh, that's through our Year of the Book program, which is our biggest, um, it's a $25,000 uh, grant for literacy programming in elementary schools that have a high percentage of uh, low-income children, as well as a high percentage of children um, underperforming in recent reading and writing assessments. So that school, um, we currently are supporting five different schools in Vermont through that uh, year-long $25,000 grant. That's on the Sustainability Academy here in Burlington. That is um, Canaan Schools and um, the Alberg Community Education Center up in the northern part of the state. It's Molly Stark Elementary School in Bennington, which is the second year in a row we've been in Bennington with this program. Uh, and it's a Salisbury Community <coughs> School as well. Um, in Salisbury. And so we are literally all over the state. Um, in those programs, we're working in the elementary school throughout the year, bringing in um, a number of different authors and illustrators, having family literacy events and parent discussions to emphasize the importance of reading with young children and to give, um, to sort of break down that barrier of intimidation that some families may have, especially if they um, have low literacy skills themselves, to be really, um, you know, emphasize how important it is to be telling stories with kids, engaging them with language, um, with books, and, and with the authors too. Absolutely. I love the, you know, Vermont actually has so many authors mm -hmm. like Catherine Patterson and, and, uh, you know. Absolutely. Uh, and, Mm -hmm. who, is Jan Arnofsky, is she? Um, so, uh, Jin, um, Jim Arnofsky. Jim, sorry. <laughs> yep, um, who is from Southern um, Vermont as well. Okay. So, he, I believe he, so he um, is also one of our very popular authors and illustrators who comes um, and, you know, sings and illustrates with the kids. Um, when Jason Chin has come to events, he actually comes up there and does drawings with the kids, so engages with them. And he likes to talk about how um, he was inspired to become an illustrator by a visit who, uh, an author who visited his school oh, when he was a, a child and how he likes to be able to share that, that inspiration with kids too. Um, yeah, so it's not just um, certainly the inspiration to see and meet authors who can do this as a living, but also um, there's a feeling of um, that we're really, someone's really paying attention mm -hmm. to these kids, you know, that, that they get to meet the author of their favorite book, that these people are here to talk to them and to really um, support them and believe in them and that that's really 
you know, valuable thing as well. Um, and just one other partner I wanted to mention too is um, Choose Your Own Adventures, um, Choose Co. Many of you may remember these books from when you were a kid. Um, still very popular. Um, it's actually, they're actually made um, in Waitsfield, Vermont. And um, so Choose Co has been very generous in, in donating a number of books to us that our kids always love. All right, terrific. I love books and I could stay and talk and look at pictures, <laughs> I think, for the rest um, of the program. But I want to make sure that we give everybody enough time to talk about their organizations and hopefully, you know, we can circle back. Um, so, Kelly, tell us about yes. Steps 10 Domestic Thank you, Violence. Thank you, Barry, for, um, for having us today. This is wonderful. Um, so, my name is Kelly Dougherty. I'm the Executive Director of Steps to End Domestic Violence. We are a domestic violence organization that serves Chittenden County. We're the largest domestic violence organization in the state, and we're also the only organization in Chittenden County that focuses exclusively on domestic violence. So we are sort of the go-to organization for anyone who may be finding themselves in an abusive relationship or um, maybe just has questions about what a healthy relationship is and what a healthy relationship is all about. We do provide a lot of crisis services, and I'll talk a little bit about that, but we also think of ourselves as an education and prevention organization. So our, our goal, just like in our name, is to end domestic violence. Um, some folks may uh, remember us by our former name, which was Women Helping Battered Women. We changed our name about a year and a half ago um, in order to be more inclusive to everyone we serve. So we serve um, not just women. We're not just an organization comprised of women. Um, and so we wanted to be sure that the message was out there that, you know, regardless of your gender, gender identity, if you need help, we're here for you. Mm -hmm. um, so our Giving Tuesday campaign, I'm really excited about. Um, we uh, have an active Facebook campaign. We've got email blasts. We've got things going out on Twitter and, and probably Instagram. And our handle is at stepsvt.org, and you can see um, on your screen um, one of our images from um, our Facebook campaign. So our goal today is to raise $10,000, and as of the time we arrived here at the studio, I think we were at about 2000 so far, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, and really, just like Sarah said earlier, you know, the, the nonprofit sector really relies on individual contributions um, and relies on donations really to keep our doors open and to continue to be able to provide services. And I think that sometimes um, people might think, you know, well, you get federal money and you get state money and maybe you're a United Way agency. And all of those things are great and sort of help form maybe like a backbone, but it's really not enough to, to keep providing services. And all of our services are free. All of our services are confidential. Um, and in this climate of declining you know, government resources, um, we find ourselves even more reliant on the generosity of, um, of all of you mm -hmm. to, um, to help us uh, continue to provide services. So like I said, our goal today is $10,000 um, that goes toward, you know, like we were talking about earlier, today is really the kickoff mm -hmm. for our annual campaign, which um, is underway. And um, by the end of the year, we're hoping to raise um, at least $50,000, um, including what we get today. So anything that we get today will be counted toward our Giving Tuesday goal. And people can um, give online through our website. Our website is stepsvt.org. And if you go to stepsvt.org slash donate, it'll take you right to our donations page. Um, in addition to financial contributions, we also rely a lot on in-kind donations. So if people feel that they're not in a position to make a financial gift, although any gift of any amount um, makes a huge difference, mm -hmm. um, sometimes people want to feel like they're giving something other than money or in addition to money. So we're also um, always looking for certain items for our emergency shelter or for people who come into our office who are looking for basic needs. Um, we're always looking for toiletries, um, for diapers, for feminine products, for um, a whole host of, of just sort of daily living activity <coughs> or daily living supplies like toothpaste and toothbrushes yeah. and those types of and things. And I've seen, I think that's something that if 
if people follow you on social media, yes. those lists are often posted there. Yes. And another way that people can help is is to share your messages right? Um, with any of these organizations. Exactly. You know, I think everyone has a very vibrant social media presence, mm -hmm. and that is a great way. Yeah. Like the organizations that you care about, and you can help mm -hmm. you know, spread, spread the word about the work that they're doing and yeah. help support them that way as well. It's yeah. not just about financial donations, although, right. you know, those are certainly very important, yeah. but and there are lots of other ways to get yeah, involved. Yeah, and those those uh, current needs or in-kind items are on our website as well, and we also have an Amazon wish list. So as folks are maybe on Amazon doing their holiday shopping, there's a wish list where we continuously post items that people might need. But um, just to briefly mention sort of what we do, because I don't think I've even said that yet, <laughs> for those people who may not be familiar with us, we... Um, we provide um, a host of different services for people who may be experiencing abuse in their intimate partner relationships. So we operate an emergency shelter here in Burlington for people who are fleeing violence and maybe have nowhere else to go. Um, and we also provide emergency housing outside of our shelter in, um, in, through motels. Our, our biggest program is really our 24-7 hotline. So we have a, a hotline that is 802-658-1996. It operates 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So, and that, folks who are answering our hotline field a wide variety of calls from the crisis call um, to the person who just needs some emotional support and wants to talk about what's happening in their relationship or people who may just want to be connected to other resources in the community. So, you know, you don't need to be in crisis to call the hotline. It really is the gateway to accessing our services as well as becoming connected. And sometimes we're just providing education over the phone. Um, we provide legal advocacy services, so people who are seeking legal, um, a, a legal process for their domestic violence, maybe getting a relief from abuse order. We have legal advocates who will help walk people through that process. It can be very intimidating. You're facing your abuser in court, potentially. Um, can be a really scary situation. So our legal advocates will accompany people to court and they will help walk them through those intimidating legal processes like divorce and parentage and custody. We also provide some economic stability programming. Often domestic violence comes with financial implications, whether overt economic abuse, where a partner will control all of the finances in the relationship or jeopardize employment or schooling for their partner. It's a way to maintain power and control. Um, so we kind of help people disentangle that and, and get some good economic footing. And then we also um, provide services to children and youth mm. and um, we offer a support group and we do a lot of education in the community. We're in every public high school in Chittenden County mm -hmm. every year doing workshops on healthy relationships and dating violence and better, or, um, bystander intervention and um, so that we can help educate youth as they're starting to form their first relationships mm -hmm. about what's healthy and what's not so that hopefully we can break the cycle. And all of, the, all of those services, like I said, are free and um, we really rely on you to um, to help keep those services going. Great. Well, thank you. I mean, it's I love having the opportunity to have these conversations because it's a really great way for people to understand the breadth and the depth of the services that are being offered by so many of the nonprofit organizations throughout Vermont. I think there are almost um, uh, four thousand nonprofit organizations that are doing amazing work throughout the state. It's like 20% of the workforce yeah, is exactly. non yeah. So I'm glad that you are all here again. Thank you again for being here. And we're going to move on to Dan LeClaire from 1% for the Planet to talk about uh, what you guys are doing today yeah, on Giving Tuesday. Thrilled to be here. Thanks for having us, Barry. Great to be with all of you and here about the great work being done by each of your organizations as well. Um, so like Barry said, I'm Dan LeClaire with 1% for the Planet. Um, uh, I'm the Director of Development there. And 1% for the Planet is a global organization um, that uh, is, our mission is to bring together dollars and doers to accelerate smart environmental giving. Um, and so we definitely have a global footprint, but we're actually headquartered right here in Vermont and do all of that work from uh, 
the basement of a building on uh, Maple Street here in Burlington. So, um, so it, it sounds like a lofty name, and there, there's a mighty team of about 12 of us that are doing that work. So, um, you know, we uh, do the work that we do by assembling a network of businesses and individuals uh, around the world, really, who are committing to give back 1% in either in their business or in their lives as individuals um, to a network of environmental nonprofit partners that we've assembled and that's uh, a couple of thousand in about 60 countries at mm. this point. So, um, so it's really quite a big uh, organization in, in some ways. And the impact that we have touches down in really local ways at the same time. So here in the Burlington area, for example, you know, on the business side, we have Skinny Pancake as a member. You know, they give back 1% of their sales um, to the environment. And um, on the nonprofit side, we have great nonprofits like the Intervale Center that's um, receiving some of the funds from the businesses and individuals that are participating in our network model. So because of the way that we work, we're able to sort of leverage dollars that come in to grow the network and get even more dollars out to um, the pressing environmental issues that are confronting us. And I think this year in particular, we've seen so many of those environmental extremes, whether hurricanes or wildfires, et cetera. Um, so, uh, you know, it's really important that we get those kinds of dollars out to this uh, environmental work. Um, since 2002, which is when we were founded, we've got about $175 million out through our network, um, which is fantastic, mm -hmm. and we hope to do even more. Uh, right now in the United States, only about 3% of all philanthropy is going to environmental issues, environmental nonprofits, mm. um, and we think that, you know, that number is not where it needs to be to, you know, to tackle the significant uh, issues we confront uh, na nationally and globally. So. Uh, you know, Giving Tuesday is a, a, a day to be here and talk about the work that we're doing. And also, as with several others, you know, we are we do utilize Giving Tuesday and, and you know, promote it as a way to kick off the giving season. Mm -hmm. um, it is a really important day in the nonprofit sector for all of us. Um, so we do have a goal of, of raising $5,000 today. Um, and that uh, money that is given will help us to grow the network um, to strengthen those nonprofit relationships that we have and ultimately accelerate the dollars that are getting into the hands of these environmental nonprofits. Um, so we, we definitely hope that people will consider a gift uh, today, but, but also throughout the giving season, um, you know, every day is an important day for our environment. And so, um, you know, I would encourage folks at home and listening and, and everyone here to check out our website at 1%fortheplanet.org. Um, you can donate there. Um, we're also running a Facebook campaign. Um, and uh, there's lots of different ways to learn about what we're doing. Our, our handle is at 1% FTP. Okay. Um, so uh, yeah, we hope to see everyone there and, and consider getting involved in our movement. It's, it's open to everyone and, um, and we can't do it alone. Great, thank you so much. Yeah. I just, uh, we've thrown a lot of web addresses, <laughs> phone numbers out, but I wanted to do one more plug, and I think this will be a helpful one. Uh, if you go to commongoodvt.org, that will, you'll be able to find all of the organizations, and also there are, I think, almost 70 organizations that contacted us at Common Good Vermont, so organizations throughout Vermont. Uh, that contacted us to let us know that they were participating in Giving Tuesday. So they have some kind of Giving Tuesday campaign. And you'll be able to find all of their names and their email, uh, not email, but their website information mm -hmm. there. Um, so there you go. Go to commongoodvt.org to learn more. And you mentioned the Facebook. Does anybody else have a Facebook campaign that's yep. happening right now because, um, and do you want to talk a little bit more about what's happening with that before we, we're going to wrap up soon, but let's just put a plug in, I guess, for, for Facebook and uh, um, the support that they're providing to mm -hmm. nonprofits. Yeah. Well, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is matching dollar for dollar today. Um, so today is a great way to leverage your, your donations. Um, we have a Facebook campaign going on um, and I, you know, I, there's no charge right now on Facebook. Um, there's no, they're not taking any sort of fee today. So all day today, um, your dollars are being matched and there's no fee to process the gift online. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, it's a very secure way to, to give back and have your, your dollars matched. Yeah. And we're doing that as well. So mm -hmm. if you, if folks went to at Steps BT or just 
search for Steps to End Domestic Violence on Facebook. Um, we also are doing that same campaign, <coughs> um, so where people can create their own fundraiser or give through Facebook without the fees and with the match from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which is amazing. And I'd also like to plug um, lo local support, local businesses that are supporting mm -hmm. us as well, if I, if I may. Um, there's a number of organizations or, or bookstores around Vermont um, and New Hampshire that are um, running book drives for the Children's Literacy Foundation during the holiday season, um, places that you can purchase a children's book, in some cases at a discount, um, and give that to a child in need. Um, and then we will distribute that through our literacy programs to low-income, at-risk, and rural kids throughout the state. Uh, and so one tonight, Bridgeside Books in Waterbury, and we're based in uh, Waterbury Center, so they're a part of ours um, is kicking off Books for a Cause for Giving Tuesday. So Bridgeside Books and Stowe Street Cafe um, are coming together. Those businesses are adjacent um, right by the bridge in, in Waterbury. Uh, there will be um, jazz music performed by Tara Noel, um, drinks, snacks, um, and uh, books donated for children. Um, so I, I understand that they're trying to donate at least 400 this year to raise. We also locally have um, Phoenix Books um, here in Burlington as well as Essex, Rutland, and Chester that are also hosting book drives for us and offering, I believe, 20 percent off children's books um, throughout the holiday season donated to, to the Children's Literacy Foundation. Right. So you can also support local businesses yeah. and, and give back. And I would say one, one of the other interesting things about Facebook and even otherwise that we've uh, got going on this year is we, we actually have some volunteers that are, um, you know, they may not themselves be able to give, but they're encouraging others to give today. Yeah. Um, and what's great about Facebook in particular is that, um, you know, folks can get online and they can be a part of this effort. Yeah because they can set up a little, they can say, you know, I want to raise $200 to help yeah. get 1% to their $5,000 goal today. And they can activate that campaign and get it out to their social media um, folks and things like that. So um, it's, it's a, a great way to sort of get involved, whether or not you yourself can participate, mm -hmm. you know, financially, um, you can still have a really big impact. It's like they tell two friends and then exactly. they tell two friends. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. And the only other thing, sorry, unless you had no, something to share, I just wanted to also say that I think you had mentioned that there are other ways to, to give besides mm -hmm. just monetary. Um, so I think that's absolutely spreading the word and, and yeah. sharing you know, about organizations you support, giving in-kind donations and volunteering. I don't know if you guys all, uh, we rely heavily on our volunteers as well. So that's certainly another way that um, we have you know, a dedicated group that comes in every week and helps us sort and, and distribute thousands of children's books. Uh, so um, that's certainly another way that you can give back as well if you're not able to make a donation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same. We rely on volunteers as well, and um, and we're actually currently recruiting volunteers in particular who are interested in um, working on our hotline. So if anyone out there um, might be interested in learning more about that, you can also go to our website, stepsvt.org, and, um, and go to our volunteer page and, and learn a little bit more about that. If we're plugging volunteers, yeah. I want to get one last, one last yeah. in. Meals on Wheels does not happen without our, mm -hmm. our volunteers, nor does our senior companion. We have a thousand plus volunteers throughout Northwestern Vermont, and none of our programs would exist if it weren't for that, mm -hmm. that group of thousand plus people so we are always looking for meals on wheels um, deliver deliveries and um, for senior companions um, so agewellvt.org monetary volunteer um, we we are ex we are always open to um, people joining our force so Hey. It's important to remember giving can be giving time as much as exactly. 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 There's lots of ways to give and there are many days to give. Today just happens to be Giving Tuesday. So today's a great day to give. You've heard about some organizations, great organizations that you can um, give to either financially or with a gift of time. Um, but I think Speaking of time, our time <laughs> is pretty much up. We could have spent, I think I'd love to have you all back to talk yeah, more and learn go. more about your organizations. But uh, for today, thank you so much thank for you. being thank you here. Thank you for having us. And uh, thank you all for watching. Happy Giving Tuesday.